let's go with Pep. Let's go with with, with uh, Pedro Gonzalez. So this is the um, the an article in Breitbart, and I'll tell you this: there's there, it's not to say that like I have these thoughts and don't share them because I'm nervous about people hacking my email or whatever. I uh, I draft even DMs as though someday the person receiving that DM might determine that I'm an enemy and might you know try to disclose them or use them for blackmail. It's like, it, call it neuroses, call it whatever. It's maybe a very, very stressful way to live one's life. But also, you know, like it's, it's nothing more than a proverbial fear of God. Like I, I try to conduct myself as though my actions will at some point be disclosed to the public for good and for bad. And so when I got angry at that old lady who told me to pull on my dog's leash the other night, and I didn't flip out and say, go F yourself, get off the sidewalk, you F and B. I just said, no I'm, not, no, I'm not pulling on my dog's leash. I don't know if I look crazy. Whatever, doesn't matter. That people have these, these, these uh, you know. And then the flip side, just to give the, the steel man to Pedro Gonzalez, the discussions and the tweets that you have among friends where you are you know, either being edgy, where you don't have the same filter that you might otherwise have, not in terms of what you say, but rather in terms of the way you say it, because there are you know, ways of saying the exact same thing in uh, you know, a, a politically acceptable fashion versus one which is unfiltered because you think you're among friends and you don't worry about having to weigh your words in the same way. So there's that. This is the breaking story. And by the way, it's a long freaking story. Like whoever did this, there's a lot of pictures, but this is an expose. There may be some political motivation to the expose. Breitbart might be pro-Trump and Pedro Gonzalez has come out as being wildly partisan pro-DeSantis. And I couldn't care less. I think it, I do you know, think it's not odd. I, I do find it odd when all objectivity is out the window in the name of partisan support, but set, a, set that aside. All right, so exclusive rising conservative influencer, Pedro Gonzalez, regularly espoused racist and anti-Semitic sentiments in private messages. Pedro Gonzalez, a rising influencer in politics, eh, 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 Oh, regularly in 2019 and 2020 sent racist and anti-Semitic messages. Breitbart News can reveal after reviewing months worth of private messages. And, and they, they really did reveal. It, they revealed all of the damning ones for Pedro Gonzalez. It's not clear if they revealed what would otherwise be uh, exculpatory ones or maybe incriminating ones of the interlocutors, because I think this is all results from a, a leak of the recipients of these texts who might have decided now's the time to make a political move, even if there's, you know, legit objectionable nature behind these things. Recently, Gonzalez has become perhaps the most well-known as one of the most active and strident pro-Florida DeSantis influencers on Twitter. He responded to Breitbart News investigation after this article was published by claiming he is a target of Trump, and that is why these messages became public. He did not address any of the content of the messages, but did admit that they were, quote, from a different dumb season of my life. My biggest problem with this is... Pedro's response to it. Apparently he's going to address it in greater detail today was from one of his tweets. For now, my biggest, my biggest issue, like there would have been a better way to um, address this than to say it's from a different dumb season of my life that was barely four years ago, three years ago, uh, and that it's a political uh, smear campaign. Because even if it is, that's not much of a defense to some of the tweets that, or the DMs, sorry, they were not tweets, they were DMs. So I'll just go through some of them. We don't need to go through all of this. Yeah, like not every Jew is problematic, but the sad fact is that most are, Gonzalez wrote in a group chat in 2019. The only tactical consideration of Jews is screening them for movements, Gonzalez wrote in another group chat message. But that is not something op that is not something for open discussion. That that's where they're also gonna, you know, get him to say like he knew that what he was saying was wildly offensive that couldn't be discussed in public and yet felt comfortable doing it in private i'm at a point where i can respect the jews as individuals and like them as individuals but as a group i see them as problematic gonzalez said i mean uh, again not, this is not to steal man this but there will there will be there will be people who say oh okay so this is actually exculpatory. You know, nothing against any individual, but when it comes to groups like, I don't know, the ACLU. Is it the ACLU or the ADL? Which one is it? I keep getting mistaken. One of those groups, it's a Jewish organization that goes after defamation. And as a group with a stated objective, well, they've done some wildly offensive things that even I criticize. Now, <laughs> am I one of the good ones? Who knows? Am I, one of the, am I a self-hating Jew, as other people have called me? Because I don't think laws prohibiting 
Holocaust denial are a good thing. I don't think they quell anti-Semitic sentiment. I think they exacerbate it. I think they get wildly overused, abused to stifle what would otherwise be actually legitimate uh, discussion about historical atrocities. You know, most people don't appreciate, like when people use the blanket term Holocaust denial, if someone wants to say, well, I don't think the number was 6 million, I, want to, I think it's 5 million, that's Holocaust denial. Arguing over the number, as if to say like, you know, 5 million, okay, that's, your, that's Holocaust denial. So the term gets abused, it gets over, over applied blanket wise to stifle legitimate conversation. And it also gets abused to what I believe is foment anti-Semitic sentiments um, by preventing people from thinking wrong. You know, I, I, there are broader laws that, that, that outlaw genocide denial, but you can understand why some people would be very angry and think that there might be some political double standard when certain laws apply to certain groups, but, you know, you don't even get the international community necessarily to recognize the Armenian genocide. Then you got some more. And yet another message, Gonzalez shared a clearly anti-Semitic cartoon, clearly anti-Semitic, yeah, cartoon, of Pepe, it's... <laughs> Grabbing the large nose of a Jewish editor-in-chief a newspaper saying Mr. Hebowitz, editor-in-chief, appears on the nameplate of the desk below him while the man declares, getting real tired of this shit, Gonzalez, when sharing this cartoon, wrote, laughing my ass off. Some people might find this funny, sharing edgy, even offensive memes privately. Um, maybe a mountain of a molehill uh, or uh, some of the other stuff, you know, might have much, <laughs> uh, much more difficult... Uh, justification. This one's interesting, by the way, uh, where Pedro Gonzalez is, is it's an interesting sentiment, uh, almost an admission. I mean, it's an admission that one has to, uh, you know, understand as a human. Minorities like me see America for what it is, a country built by whites that can only survive if whites survive. Gonzalez wrote another message. And it is my job to make whites wake up because if they don't, we are all fucked, especially people like me. And it goes on. This is the one where, you know, the, 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 the uh, I'm not even going to read the, some of the, the some of the stuff, uh, you know, if, if the defense is I'm making offensive jokes among people, I, 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 I the problem is there's going to, some of the stuff is going to be very, very, very difficult to justify, or at least to explain away. Uh, and it goes on and it goes on and it goes on. Uh, and I don't think we need to go into it in any more detail than that. I do want to see what the chat has to say about this. So that it goes on and it goes on and it goes on. There's some stuff in there, objectively offensive. Some people are going to say, well, if it, facts don't care about your feelings. And I would say this, if Pedro had come out and said, um, yeah, you know, this, it's, it's obviously offensive the way I'm talking. Uh, and I'm, I'm not using a filter that I would otherwise use to present these views publicly, but here's a more elegant way that I can explain them. Uh, you know, that would be one thing to come out and say that this is a Trump smear and that the people that he was texting with at a different point in his life. Oh, that's what he said that they were. The, he was DMing with Trump supporters. And this was from a different. What did he say? A different a bizarre period of his life, whatever. Three years old to say it's a Trump smear is to divert responsibility from what you have to take responsibility for. To say that the people on the receiving ends of your anti-Semitic and your racist messages were Trump supporters, when some of the people on the receiving end obviously took issue with them as they did in real time, well, that's as if to say they're racist too. Not the best defense. They're anti-Semitic too. Not the best defense. Especially since some of them on the receiving end did find them inappropriate at the time, others unclear. That being said, I would like to have Pedro back on the show for a discussion. Because what, what, whether or not you find Pedro's views offensive and whether or not you find them anti-Semitic, let's, let's, let's just go like this. Whether or not they are even anti-Semitic. This is the discussion that I've had with people which shocks their conscience to some extent. Let, let's say it is anti-Semitic. Let's just, I mean, I'm not asking everybody to agree with it, just take for granted, let's hypothesize, operate on that assessment. It is anti-Semitic. All right. Is there anything that actually occurs in the real world that could exacerbate anti-Semitic sentiment? Well, anti-Semitic sentiment, it's purely irrational. There's nothing you need to talk about it. And if you complain, if you, if you, if you try to look for any underlying influence or exacerbation to anti-Semitic uh, sentiment, you are uh, apologizing for it. Bullshit. And it goes back to the Holocaust denial legislation. If I distinct, if I genuinely believe that, uh, you know, legislation that would boycott, I'm sorry, legislation that would ban boycotting Israel, 
If I legitimately believe that will actually exacerbate anti-Semitic sentiment, and then legislation like that goes into effect, and then you see um, increases of anti-Semitic rhetoric, you don't need to justify the anti-Semitic rhetoric in order to understand that you might, if, you're, if your goal is to reduce it, you might want to enact policy that would reduce it. So let's just take for granted, Pedro Gonzalez is a horrible, uh, what's the word, Not incorrigible, unforgivable anti-Semite and racist. All right. What are some of the things that 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 he invokes to say that uh, you know his beliefs are justified? When you have overrepresentation in certain areas, people will rightly or wrongly come to certain conclusions. And if you prohibit and disallow them from talking about it, you're only going to solidify in their minds and potentially in the minds of others who might have been on the fence that they are right about it. And so you want to address the underlying. Um, justifications, if you can use that word, you have to talk about it. And you have to allow people to talk about it without demonizing them as irrational, not worth discussion in the first place, because that's, after all, everything that they did with anybody who, you know, questioned other other, other narratives. <sighs> May have gone off a little meandering thing here. Um, you know, in, in the text messages, in his messages, you know, he's saying it's, it's hogwash to start claiming that... Um, the Merchant of Venice is anti-Semitic and it shouldn't be taught. Odd, oddly enough, you know, when you have Joe Biden referring to Jews as Shylocks, I think he referred to Jews as Shylocks, you know, all is forgiven. Uh, but you know, different, different, different people, different set of standards. When, when you have, like, it's a little known fact. I mean, once upon a time, they had something, they, they referred to the first impeachment of Donald Trump as the Jew coup. They referred to it as the Jew coup because a statistically... A uh, disproportionate number of the players involved happen to be Jewish. And you can't, look, as uncomfortable as it is to acknowledge this, to recognize this, you can't deny it. Adam Schiff, Nadler, Vinman, uh, the lawyers, I mean, Raskin, all the, the, uh, the, the, there was statistical overrepresentation. Now, is that to say that it's anti Semitic to come to the conclusion that they did this because they were Jews or they were doing this as Jews to promote something of a Jewish ideology? I, I'd argue that that would be anti-Semitic, but I would also argue that that would be ill-founded because although Jewish, in order for them, in order for someone to say they were doing it because they were Jewish, you'd have to say, well, what, what Jewish policy are they trying to put forward uh, by going after Trump and members of his team who are also Jewish as well? Now, so while it might be anti-Semitic to come to the conclusion that this was a Jewish cabal orchestrated um, impeachment, it would be disingenuous to say, well, I'm going to ignore the fact that a statistical overrepresentation of the players involved happened to be Jewish. Now, that also happens to be true on the other side as well. And that's where I think coming to anti-Semitic conclusions becomes problematic and untenable. But you can't uh, ignore and just write off what it is that people who you think are vile anti-Semites are invoking as a basis for their vile anti-Semitism. So all that to say, Pedro, if you're watching this, uh, you are welcome back on. I'm not going to uh, try to pull a Fox News and shout over you. Uh, I'd like to have the discussion and, and, and actually hear if there's any better underlying justification for this other than it's a Trump smear. The people who I was sending this to were Trump supporters, so that's how bad and racist they are. But there's nothing bad or racist about what I said. It, mutually incompatible uh, defenses to what has come to light today. Whether or not it is a politically motivated smear, my goodness, politics is dirty and the fighting between the DeSantis camp and the Trump camp is in fact very dirty on both ends. So that might be a motivation. But to say it's a smear campaign to make me look like an anti-Semite because you're revealing anti-Semitic and racist messages that I was sharing uh, privately, not thinking anybody was going to see them, not the best defense. Uh, they're not anti-Semitic and here's my justification for why I said them and I would have said it more eloquently had I known they would become public. Better defense. Let's see you make it. Um, it's not anti-Semitic, but I was sending them to Trump supporters, so Trump supporters are racist and anti-Semitic. Not the best defense either. Let me see if there's any discussion in the chat here, because I want to see. Um, and then the, other, the, the, the bottom line is also, like, I have no doubt that <laughs> someone like Pedro, who, who someone thinking like Pedro, would apply a similar uh, blanket uh, you know, to, to other demographics as well. So like, like I said before, I, I have an underlying theory. There is no such thing as an anti-Semite or a racist or a bit there. People are just assholes. People will make broad sweeping generalizations based on certain 
uh, individual examples, prominent examples. Um, and um, what the, I, I hear my stupid dog whining and just distracted me. Oh, they'll make broad sweeping generalizations, not just on race, not just on religion, on physical appearance, on all sorts of things. And so people, yeah, that we use the word like racist and anti-Semitic. I, I say they're just assholes. And in as much as I say that as well, I don't believe that there should be hate crimes. I don't think you should distinguish between crimes based on hateful motivation of race, religion. I mean, I think if you murder someone, that, that's a hate crime. And acts of violence are hate crimes. And to say like, we're going to make it super duper bad to beat someone up because they're black as opposed to beat someone up because they owe you 200 bucks. Oh, I, I call me, uh, let me, let me take an example that will involve my ethnicity. Beat someone up because they're Jewish versus beat someone up because you want to take their money. Uh, I'm not sure that I feel that there's a material moral difference between those two things such that one should be called a hate crime with uh, enhancements and the other should just be, it's just regular crime, just regular violence motivated by hatred of a human, but not motivated by hatred of an identity aspect of that human.